Welcome to another lesson. We are going to implement the route to create a new entry using MySQL. Let's get started. Here in the file server.js, we have the push to entries in line 67. This will no longer be a push, this will be a query to insert into the table entries. Let me show you some notes that I have on. We already did the select star from entries this way. How can we create a new entry? Uh, one way you could do that is using insert into values like I did before, if you had seen. You could do this and you could specify the columns and then the values respectively. If you do it this way, you would have to have a question mark like this. And then the second argument to the call to query would be an array of elements that correspond to each question mark that appears in the query. Another way of doing that is if you pass an actual object as a second argument, like here, line 17. If you have an object and you pass an object as a second argument, that object will correspond to the question mark here and it will appear. If you try query.sql, you can see that this is what you're going to get. That's another way. So let's try this way. Let's see if we can do that. Insert into entries, set, question mark, and pass the object as a second argument. Let's try. Back to server.js. So we have the new entry here using the request body text. Then we do some validation here. It's important that we have this validation here. Of course, that we could, the, the database already has some validation, right? If you see the description of our table entries for text, for example, cannot be null. And the max, it's 256 characters. Of course, we can leave all the validation, leave all the validation to the database. But that's not a uh, really good practice because querying the database might be expensive. Especially if it's being used all the time by millions of people. So what do you want to do is avoid any sort of database operation if you can. If we can do that by simply validating things before even making any kind of database query, that's very good. So we still should have this here. Now that's great. Now this part is going to change. So let's do the change here. We are going to call on the connection dot query. What is the query here? Insert into name of the table entries. Right set question mark because the question mark will be the placeholder for our the things we want and you can pass the actual object new entry here that contains the text field in this case it could have any more other fields and then we can have a callback here and i think the first is the error let me see the notes first is the error results and fields let's see what all those mean error results fields I'm going to call so log all of results and fields here. As for the error, we're going to ha handle it in some way. If error. So we're going to insert and we're going to see something if there is an error let let's think about this if if we messed up this query and it's an insert query it's our fault now the client is going to see is going to ask for a new record to be created of course we messed up here in the server side 
There's no way we can guess. No way you can mitigate this. So we have no choice but to tell the user, hey, we cannot do it. There was a problem on our end. So actually, I cannot think of any particular thing to do right now but return 500 in terms of server error. So let's ju just that. Rest.status 500 send. And you can send a message here with the error. Uh, failed to create new entry. Please, please try again later. How about that? And then that gives us time for the server side people to fix things and the user will be able to know that, okay, something's going on. I have to wait. I'll try it again later. If everything goes fine, we're going to have these. And I suspect that I think in the notes we can get the insert ID and everything here. Since we are creating a new record in the RESTful convention, right? There's something called REST. And usually when you have a post create a new record, you want to send back the new record fields, including the ID that was generated by the database. And to do that, we're going to have to set the new entry.id here. And to do that, we do, I think we can use this insert ID. I'm not really sure, but let's, let's try it out. I'm going to console log this results ID results that ID insert ID, sorry. Uh, and I'm going to comment this out for the time being, and I'm not going to have this push and the send here will be still be there let's try it out reload the page here i don't actually don't need to reload but there's something going on let's see what the problem is i messed up oh i see there's a syntax error. I put an error function instead because I already had a function here. So I don't need either one will work fine. Okay, let's try creating something. Looking at the server side, we have servers listening on part 3000. We got a console log. Results is an okay packet some information about the query i guess results id 2 so that's the result insert id that's correct right because the last record was id 1 and we have fields undefined okay there's nothing fields so i think we're good with let's see what we got from the response Tax AS, whatever. That's correct. Let's get this going with the results.insert ID here. And we don't need a console log anymore. Remove lines 75 is the one. Now we have that object, not object, an array of object. We don't need this anymore. Remove lines 19 through 32. Goodbye. Let's make sure it doesn't exist anywhere. I'm going to search case sensitive. Nowhere to be found. We got rid of that in memory kind of database fake simulation. Uh, let's reload the application here. We can see it's persistent. And if I look at the MySQL client and I do a select star. Let's do my SQL select, oops, select star from entries. Oh, I have to say the database, uh, write something development dot. I can see that ID two is that ASDSDAS, which confirms it actually persisted the data in the database table. 
entries. That's wonderful. Now we have, we can kill the server, restart it, and reload the web page, and the data is still there. The data is persisted. Let's test this error here. If we mess up the query, save this, try to create something, we get a 500 internal server error, and we get the message here, failed to create new entry freestyle again later. That's very good. The user knows what's going on, and he can try again later, after the server-side people fix the problem. Let's revert the query to the correct implementation. So this is it for this lesson. We learn to modify our post slash entries endpoint to actually insert a new record into the database. We use insert into entry set question mark new entry as an object as a second argument. Send a 500 if there is any problem with the query. Otherwise, set the new ID using results.insertID and send that new entry. Don't, I would just want to close with pointing out that you don't want to be hard coding the new entry fields inside the query itself because of a risk of SQL injection. That is, the user, the client, can type anything they want. They could type SQL statements, SQL queries that could be uh, that could be uh, something like deleting your database or doing something really bad to your database, and that could be substituted here into the query, and that would be really bad. That's called SQL injection. You don't want that. To avoid SQL injection, always, always use the question mark. And if you need to replace anything into the query, do it as a separate thing. In this case, as a second argument. Leave the question mark in the query itself. And it will handle that injection for you. That problem of injection. With that, I'll see you in the next time.